We look at the final episode in the original TV series, Firefly, episode 14, Objects in Space. Megan, unfortunately, we're at the final episode, but what did you think about this episode? It's always a little bittersweet watching the last episode in a series when it is the last episode that was cut criminally short. <laughs> but it was a fun final chapter. So, of course, All Firefly is a little bit monster of the week. Most of the episodes stand alone really well while still having overarching character development and plot development. And this was the Bounty Hunter episode. So this idea I don't think has been brought forward so far in Firefly, but this is a society in which there are bounty hunters. And this one has finally tracked down our fugitives, River and Simon Tam. So let me, let me start off with a different take, which is or was that up until the time I saw River in the bounty hunter spaceship, I thought this was the best science, some of the best science fiction I had ever seen because she claims that she has evolved into a higher life form, which has taken in the shape of being part of serenity. Mm. And I completely was bought into it. And I thought, <laughs> this is just great. It's Josh Whedon at his most expansive. He's finally done it, done what he wants. Let's just rock in on this. And then it turned out she was actually, he just outsmarted everyone, proving once again that she's smarter than the average bear. <laughs> it, it was still a good setup and it was a good it, plan. Uh, it was a good and, plan. Yeah, no. like, I always thought she was hiding. I never thought she had actually morphed into this ship, but boy, it, it was played it was. by the teenage girl. So it, it opens with River beginning to not time jump, but I thought she was seeing what people were thinking, hmm. not what, what they were saying. What they were thinking. What she thought they were thinking. And that led to some interesting thought experiments from the other crew members. And then she picks up what she thinks is a branch or a tree limb or a small branch, I should say. But it turns out she's holding a pistol hmm. and she's holding it in a cafeteria. And the rest of the crew is very upset with this. Mal manages to disarm her. And that leads to a very interesting dialogue about, is she too dangerous to stay on the ship? And then mm -hmm. Kaylee tells us the story that she has seen River actually shoot people. In an ass the assault on uh, Skyplex, Kaylee was not able to fire her weapon. Mm -hmm. And River, with eyes closed, killed three attackers with a pistol. One shot each. Yeah. And they all recognized, I think at that point, that she really has an extraordinary ability, whether it's ESP, whether it's a mind meld, whether it's uh, reading people's thoughts, whatever it may be. All of the above. Uh, <laughs> all of the above. Or maybe she's just a witch. She's there. As Jane witch. says, just a witch. And so there's a serious dialogue on whether they're going to have to take her off the ship. So this is going on, and we see another character studying the crew, studying the plans of the ship, and he comes up, and he actually, through EVA or extravehicular activity, he disembarks from his ship and boards, gets into Serenity, and is able to either take out or disable the crew he meets to the point where he shanghais the doctor into trying to find River because she's not in her quarters. And they end up on the bridge, and that's when the faux sci-fi dialogue starts. And first of all, I have to say, being a good Southerner, that the character, the bounty hunter, is named Jubal Early. Well, Jubal Early is quite a well-known Civil War general from the South. I did not know that. He was a cavalry officer, and his claim to fame is he actually led the charge of the furthest north that the Confederacy got, which was out the outskirts of Washington, mm -hmm. D.C. He put his a hat through his sword and led a final charge, which he was killed, but he got the closest to breaching the defenses of Washington, D.C. during the Civil War. And, of course, the bounty hunter is black. 
So that is a complete level of irony to that whole situation. But the bounty hunter is, if he's not an enhanced human, he is a very healthy specimen of human. And he is very strong. He's very agile. He's very smart very and smart. very witty with his dialogue. Loved him. Great uh, character. Great antagonist. He really was good. Reveal, R- River reveals she's, she, and she's talking to him. She's actually exploring his childhood with him. And that I messed with him and it worked. And it was great. It was. And that's, I think, was really the key that we now know she's a mind reader or she can at least mm-hmm. enter people's thoughts because there was no other way for her to know that. It certainly was not on his personal diary in his ship. So he, she says, look, I'm ready to go. Come back, take me, let's get out of here. All How around. Con- heartbreaking was that? Man. That was pretty well played. That was pretty well played. But she concocts a really incredible plan to rescue the crew and to rescue Serenity. You want to pick it up there? Yes. Yeah, so as you say, she's gotten into the bounty hunter ship and she's able to communicate with everyone on the crew and is profoundly messing with poor Jubal early. He deserved it, but still. Anyway, so she makes the decision over the intercom so everyone can hear about how she realizes she's too dangerous and this whole thing has got to end and she can't risk with them at risk anymore. So she's going to go with it. Simon is not okay with this. He has put all of this work and all of this effort into protecting his sister. So he gets himself shot. He tries to put down the bounty hunter. He fails. Bounty hunter goes to collect River right off into the sunset probably get some payback for having been so publicly messed with when he is thrown into outer space by Mal, which was River's plan all along, which Simon nobly and gallantly almost ruined. I really love the double back on what the plan was there, how she was two steps ahead all along. It it was all really tender in terms of the family connections, the relationships at play, who was trusting who. I I just thought it was a really well-orchestrated episode. I did as well, and I really wish we would have been able to explore River at greater length because she clearly was, if not an enhanced human, had extraordinary has extraordinary abilities. When the plan unfolded, and the other thing that struck me was this ending and the way it mirrored the ending of Heart of Gold, where there was a very direct execution of a prisoner. And That's here a good we point. Had a, yeah. Execution of a prisoner. I saw those two, and I'm not sure we had seen deliberate, intentional executions of prisoners before. We had certainly seen death, and we've certainly seen violence. But here, I thought it, it really took it up a level of uh, with Burgess being shot on his while he was on his knees at mm-hmm. the end of Heart of Gold. And here we had Will Early thrown or kicked into deep space. And he wasn't coming home. So over the course of the series, it's been a gradual hardening of the characters and the choices that they're making. And I wonder if also if there's an element of that. It's not entirely clear to me exactly where the lines are for any particular type of badness or antagonism. But if you cross one, you cede the right to fair treatment. Like mm-hmm. the old English system of when you are out, an outlaw, you're outside the law. Maybe there's something like that at play as well. I guess the other thing that struck me in watching this episode, and part of it was knowing that it was the last episode, was I really felt like I I got a deeper sense into Mal. And that sense was that he's not running just to run. He is, this is a lifestyle he enjoys. I don't think I had fully appreciated it. I thought the opening of every show shows a little bit of the battle and when the Alliance defeats his group and he's obviously on the run from the Alliance, but the Alliance doesn't seem too concerned with the former rebels. And we haven't seen a lot of Alliance people trying to track him down. They will question him and test him if he runs across them. But I really think he enjoys this. It's not a vagabond bond lifestyle. It's actually with a family or with a community, and they have a sense of purpose together, even if they're disparate. So I just felt like I I got a little more insight into him in this episode. Once again, I'm not sure if it was because I knew it was the final episode, but I saw something different this time. Yeah. 
just this is on a much lighter note about the universe law there was one point that really jumped out to me and this was something jane said when they were talking about how dangerous someone said mentioned a wish and he said if wishes were horses we'd all be eating steak did you catch that <laughs> i did not and i thought oh my goodness it's canon they eat horse <laughs> i don't know if, is horse commonly eaten in texas not in Texas. Not in Texas. Okay, so it's occasionally, not, not super commonly, but it's occasionally eaten in Quebec. So I, I just thought that was Ooh. fun. That they <laughs> no, we don't, we don't eat horse here. Yeah, so, my partner uh, really likes it. We have horse from time to time. I've always I heard thought it that was strange. cool that they'd stuck that in there. Unfortunately, we're at the end of the series. We still have the movie to go. And I guess maybe I wanted to end with just some wrap-up thoughts about how we felt about the characters, how we felt about the story. And how did all of this end, realizing it didn't end on a period or a final beat? Yeah, it's one of those things that it, it was such a moment in media when it came about. And it, it was just never given such a fair shake, but it has such loyal followers. Like its fans are really rapidly loyal. I love all the characters. I love the way they interact. I'm a sucker for anything that really involves a chosen family. And that's very much what this is. And the way it, the season ended with so little resolved and like they had done such good setup work during these initial 13 episodes right like they really laid the groundwork for deep development of character and plot and yeah i think after some of the fan outcry they did make a movie which hopefully we'll be talking about in our next episode but as a series it really it left so much to be desired and as much as i'm a believer in finishing things when they're done i, don't I guess the other thing that i thought was we saw with the director, Josh Whedon, some stereotypical characters just beginning to grow, or tropes. And like you mentioned in the prior episode, part of Gold Jane, we saw a different side of Jane. And we saw actually a different side of Kaylee in this one. Something very bad had happened in her past that was only hinted at. River obviously is evolving in a way we don't know. And we don't know which way it's going to evolve. And then I had my insight uh, into Mal. Where was that going to go? So I felt like we had some great opening season characters. And if they had been given opportunities, I think. And I think he took a lot of what he learned and applied this as he, into his part of the MCU. Yeah, I think so, too. And we can go on and on about the problematic parts of Whedon, but the man writes a good TV show. <laughs> Not perfect, but really good. And yeah, I think exactly as you say, it was an amazing first season. And it sucks that it was the only one. That ends the TV series. We're going to take a look at the movie for next time. But until then, I'm Tom Fox. And I'm Megan Doherty. Thank you so much. And thank you, Tom, for agreeing to Firefly after at my request. I appreciate it. And I've had a great time talking about it with you. This is Tom Fox again. I hope you enjoyed Megan and I's review of Firefly, the TV series. I hope you'll join us again next week where we take a look at the Firefly standalone movie, Serenity. It will conclude our review of Firefly. If you've enjoyed this podcast, I hope you'll subscribe, rate, and review wherever great podcasts are listened to. Because That's What Heroes Do is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.